Hello everybody and welcome to How to CMake Good Part 2B. In this one we'll be looking at some basic control flow for CMake scripting. Now just like everything else in CMake scripting, control flow is implemented as commands. In particular, we'll start with the if command, which as you might expect, does conditional code execution. Just like with a regular command, we pass arguments to the if command to set the condition. There's quite a few different syntaxes for the if condition. We'll start with a basic one with the literal string true, like that. I'll print some a message if we do enter this block. Run configure. It prints condition was met. I'm just going to delete this line to get that out of the way. But the string literal true, CMake interpreted as a true condition, so it did enter the block. Just like with if there is an else command, it does not take any arguments. And we can do another message in there in case the condition failed. I'll execute configure again. It printed that the condition was met. We can flip flop this by just setting the literal to false. And it says the conditional failed. So if is one of the commands that behaves a little differently if you put its arguments in quotes. So I'll set a variable called my bool. I'll set it to true. And then I will pass in my bool without any quotes. And what CMake will do is it will treat this unquoted argument as a variable reference to a variable called my bool. This is the same as if I typed my bool just like that. This behavior changed in a much older version of CMake, and it's important to know this difference. It is not required that you dereference and quote arguments that are references to variables. So I'll configure again. The condition was met. I'll change my bool to false. Configure again and the conditional failed. We can also, of course, negate conditionals by using the keyword not in front of the condition. Configure again. The condition was met because it negated the false to be true and it executed this branch. One of the most common conditions you'll want to use is the string comparison. I'll change the name of my bool to my string. I'll change the string to this is a string and I will take the not off. If I configure again, it says the condition was met. This is because CMake treats strings that match a certain pattern as falsy, and every other string is considered truthy. The complete list of falsy strings and string patterns is available in the CMake reference documentation on the if command, which I've linked in the description. I'll add another variable called my other string. I'll say this is another string. We can compare them with the str equal operator, and I just pass the other string variable name. Execute configure. The conditional failed because this string is not equivalent to this string. We can change that string so they are equivalent and the condition is satisfied. I'll show the automatic variable dereferencing by adding quotes around this variable name. Now CMake is going to treat this as a literal string and not a reference to a variable. I'll run configure and it fails because my string, unquoted, evaluates to this is a string. My other string, in quotes, evaluates to the string, my other string. So even though these variables have the same name, this condition fails because it treats the right hand argument like a literal string because it is in the double quotes. I'll show the power of negation again by saying my other string, bring that back. I'll say not in the front, and now checking if they are not equivalent strings. The strings are equivalent. I've negated the equivalence, so the condition fails. There's many other conditional modes that can be passed to if. I won't walk through all of them, but know that there are conditions for testing the state of CMake, the presence of files, information about paths, regular expressions, and ar arithmetic comparisons, among many other things. If also supports logical conjunction and disjunction. We can also shift the precedence by using parentheses to group subconditions. I'll wrap the string comparison in a parenthesis. I'll use the AND combination operator. I'll say one equal my value. I'll set a variable called my value to three, and this condition will fail because one, of course, does not equal three. I'll wrap this also in parentheses to ensure precedence. The difference between str equal and equal is that equal does arithmetic comparison. str equal compares strings. I'll change the value of my value to one to match our condition, and our conditional executes. In addition to if and else, there is, of course, an else if which takes the same parameters as if, but only executes if the preceding branch did not. I'll do a regular expression test in this one. My other string matches, and then in quotes, a regular expression. I'll say string dollar to test if the variable value matches with the word string at the end. I'll say message status variable ends 
with the word string. If I configure, it says condition was met because this condition is still executing and this branch is not being taken. I'll change the value of my value to four to force it to pass to the else if. And now variable ends with the word string. This branch was taken. In addition to if, our simple looping. We'll start with while, which also takes the same arguments as if. I'll say while my value less 50 message status value is my value to print the value. When we end the while loop, we say end while like that. And this is going to loop forever because we're never going to change the value of my value. We'll do some simple math with the math command. The command is, of course, spelled math. The first argument is always expert. The second argument is the name of the variable to store to, which will be my value. And the third is an arithmetic expression that will be evaluated. My value plus one. I'll execute the configure again. We'll see it printed in a loop. Each value of my value incremented it then looped around again until my value reached 50 and it stopped execution. The last basic control flow will be for each. This is the most common kind of loop and it's pretty easy to use. The first argument to for each will be the loop variable. I'll call it item. The next is the loop mode. We'll do in items and then for in items, we just specify as many arguments as we want to loop over foo, bar, baz, cooks, like that. At the end of our loop, we say end for each, just like end while and end if. And inside of the for each, we can put any code we want. I'll message status item is item. I'll run the script and it iterated over each item in this list and printed it. Another useful looping mode is the range mode. I'll say for each idx range 100. Say the index is idx. Run it and it prints all values from 0 to 100 inclusive. We can also specify two parameters to the range to specify the total inclusive range that it should loop through. In this case, zero up to and including 99. If we add a third argument, it'll be the step size. I'll say five, and it'll print every multiple of five up to 99. That's the very basics of control flow. And I'll just leave on one note of a common anti-pattern I see. In very early CMake, when you used a conditional like this, my string, people would end by typing the conditional in the end if with the same parameters. This is not required and is pretty ugly and unnecessary. It doesn't add anything and it makes things confusing in some cases. Instead, you should use indentation and folding regions in your editor to match if and if blocks. That's all for this video. Check the video description for any addenda, errata, important links, or more information. Until next time, keep C making good.